Hey there, in this video I'm going to show you how to add procedural edge wear and tear and weathering, whatever you want to call it, to all your meshes completely procedurally using just a few simple nodes. It's really not that complicated and there's a lot of possibility with tweaks and control over your nodes. So this is what it looks like and it adds a great level of realism and interest to your models because in the real world, objects hit stuff, they rub on stuff, the paint comes off, the metal gets worn smooth, and all kinds of other things happen to physical objects in the real world that give them imperfect edges. So when you learn to create those in 3D, it can really bring your work to a new level. So guys, I'm almost at 2000 subscribers, which is super exciting. So if you haven't already, hit subscribe, like, and please comment. Now this trick works best on sharp edges. So I found this really cool 3D model by this amazing 3D artist named Renovox on Sketchfab. And he's got incredible stuff, all for free on Sketchfab. I downloaded the file. I'm going to import it as an FBX file. So file, import, FBX. Go to my folder with my Sketchfab stuff. There's a lot of it in here. <laughs> I like Sketchfab. There it is, radial 01. All right, so this is the model he made. Now I wanna take away all the texturing because we're just gonna do the edge shading and uh, you know not the fancy stuff. So let's right click on the object here and you can see he's got an image texture, which by the way is exquisitely done, but I don't want it for this one. And I'm gonna get rid of the normals just in case it gets in the way. And I'm gonna flip it on its side so it's gonna be easier to see in this video format. So with the object selected, if I hit the period button, it zooms in and centers on that object. Real quick, before we actually make the nodes, I need to give you a quick pros and cons of this edge shading technique. So the pros, first of all, it's procedural, which is great. No images needed, uh, very low on memory use. It's also completely tweakable. So there's a lot of things you can tweak and perfect and add to you know, what I'm gonna show you today is really just the starting point. And I am by no means a node master or you know like awesome at, at any of this stuff. I just know a few tricks, which is why I'm sharing them. So people out there that really know how to use nodes and math and all kinds of crazy stuff that's way beyond me can take what I'm going to show on this video and, you know, make it a hundred times better. But uh, this is just a basic, you know, kind of an intro video, uh, but you can still get good results with it. So it's tweakable, it's reusable as a shader. So if you save this as a node group, which is another thing I'll show you at the end of the video, how to make a, a actual shader node group and reuse it later in other files, you know, you can use it in other files. You can use it in other projects. Uh, I add it to my default blender file. So anytime I start a project, my node group for edge detecting is there and I can use it whenever I want. There's two cons though, and they're kind of big. The first one is it really only works in cycles, which I know I really wish it worked in Eevee because Eevee is so fast with stuff like this, but uh, you can get it to work in Eevee, but you have to add a whole bunch of extra geometry, which is kind of ridiculous and annoying uh, and very problematic with certain models. And you have to do the nodes a little bit differently, I think, uh, to make it really show up because it's just super faint and weak. And the second con is that you can only see the results of these nodes in render view. So you have to actually be in the rendered view of the viewport for it to be visible. If you're in materials view, what we're gonna do today will not be visible. And I don't like that, very irritating. Hopefully in future versions, they will incorporate uh, the geometry node a little bit better. Um, so let's get to building these nodes. So I'm gonna switch to shading mode and I've customized this view to basically be uh, like this, kind of a half split view. My model on bottom and nodes on top. So select your object, click new material, and here we go. We're just gonna name this edge tutorial. And up here is our node tree. So hold alt and left click and move over. That's how you pan and drag. If you have this thing over here in your way, just press the letter N on your keyboard and that will go away. So let's start by making a geometry node. So shift A to get the add menu, click on search and just type GEO. And by the way, I'm not gonna be using the popular pointiness option. I really don't like how pointiness works. I found what I believe is a better and easier to use uh, method. So we're gonna to get to that in a second. Next node we need, shift A, click on search, is bevel, B-E-V, enter. Put that down there, let's make things nice and clean. Next is a vector math, shift A, click search, V-E-C, go down to vector math. Right there, now we're gonna plug in normal to the top there and this normal to the bottom there. And we're gonna change the math method to dot product. Now I have no idea what this is doing. I really don't, but trust me, it's gonna work. All right, next is a color ramp. Shift A, click on search, type in RAM right there. Connect these, do do. And we're gonna invert this. So we're gonna switch black and white. You can do it manually by dragging these, or you can save time by clicking on the down arrow and click flip color ramp. There we go. And let's switch this to card cardinal. 
which I believe is a little smoother than linear. Next we need a basic math mode, so shift A, type in math, plug in color to slot number one, slot number two, make it the number three. This is something you can tweak later if you want to, but for now we're gonna leave it at three because it worked pretty good. Put the math mode to multiply. Okay, I promise we're, we're almost done. We need three mix RGB modes, and this is going to be used to blend in our roughness later and our noise, because adding noise to the edges is what's going to give an irregularity and give more realism and creative control. So shift A search, just type in RGB, and we're going to duplicate it times three. So shift D, put one there, and shift D, put one there. All right, let's plug in value to the very first color and make this darken. Darken color is going to go to slot two of the screen RGB mix at the very end. And this middle one here, that's just set to mix, which because we're gonna be able to cross through between roughness zero and roughness one, we're gonna put this color in slot number one at the end there. Now let's add the noise down here and we'll finish it up by making it a node group. So shift A, click on search, MUS for Musgrave or as I like to say, mousse grave. Click on the color ramp up here and just shift D. We already got one, so just move it down here. And we're gonna make it a little bit longer to give us a little more accurate control. Drag factor to factor there. Plug in the color ramp color result into color number two of darken, right up there. Move this back a little bit. If you click on a, a, a node and hit G, you can, you know, G for grab or you can move it around. Okay, so we're done, this is it. Now we need to turn it into a node group so we can control things and finalize it. So I'm gonna hit B for box select. That allows you to just grab a square, kind of like in Photoshop, and Control G, or you can go up to node and make group, Control G. So everything turned green, what's going on here? We can see our nodes in the background and we've got this in the foreground. This is basically like a nested group of nodes or a group, uh, which is kind of its own self-contained thing. If you press tab, now I've got this little guy here. What the heck is that? Well, it's not finished yet, so let's finish it. Tab to get back into edit mode of that node group. Now we gotta plug in a few things to this group input. So we can actually put in sliders and numbers here, and then it'll give us an output afterwards. So first thing we need is the radius of the uh, bevel right there. That's one thing I love about this method is the radius. You have control over the radius very easily. With pointiness, you, don't con you have no control over radius. Okay, next thing is the scale of the noise. So click on scale here and drag it to right there. Now look, if I tab again, look at this, we have controls, radius and scale, pretty cool. Moving on down, we need uh, the noise mix, which is this darken slider here, right there. That'll turn up or down our noise. We can add or take away noise. Next is the factor of this middle mixer, which is the mix between roughness it basically just gives us a normal roughness control for our shader. And then lastly, our factor over here, which is going to add the amount of uh, noise to the roughness. Okay, so outputs, we're actually gonna have two outputs. So first I'm gonna have the output from this darken to this first output slot, which is just a normal color. It's gonna give us a black and white, basically a mask type texture to use on anything. But we're also gonna have a roughness output which is specifically used for the roughness input of, uh, of this guy right here, if you wanna use that. So let's name things and make it nice and clean. Click on this output, press in to bring us, bring us back to this tab that I told you to get rid of, and we're gonna name stuff. So we can leave the first one as color, make the second one, just name it roughness or rough. And over here is all our inputs. So this very first factor, we wanna give these names so we know what the heck they are. First one is the noise mix. It's gonna add noise, to uh, the edge. Second one is roughness. And the third one is amount. So this is going to add the noise or and the, the noisy edge to the roughness, which is this roughness output here, the second one. Okay, we're done. We, need, we may need to set a few minimum and maximum values, but I'm not gonna take time to do that here, um, except for this one, because maximum, you never wanna go over maybe two or three. <laughs> there we go. Okay, one thing I forgot to do was concerning the noise node down here, we need to drag the black point up pretty high, um, up to about eight, 8.5, something like that. You can type in the number there if you wanna get real specific. And also over here on the mus Musgrave, let's make the detail uh, pretty high, or all the way up at 16, dimension at zero, and lecanarity at 1.5. Now look at that. 
it's adding a good gritty noise, which is what we want. Okay, so let's tab out of the group and go back to our normal view. So I found that this technique works best when you actually are using two shaders. So click on this main BSDF and Shift D to duplicate it down here. Now for the first one, let's pretend that this is our uh, our paint coat on whatever our prop is. So let's give it a boring color, or maybe like a rusty, you know, orange red. Uh, maybe a little bit darker right there. And uh, put your specular down, your metallic to zero. Roughness all the way up, because this is basically like a matte paint of, uh, a matte coating of paint, right? Okay, now the second one's gonna be the opposite. Keep your color at white and actually make it all the way up to pure white. Metallic all the way up, specular all the way up, and roughness all the way down. So this is the metal underneath the paint. Uh, which is going to be revealed when the edges get scratched and worn away, right? So we've got two shaders. Now we're going to mix them with a mix shader. So shift A, click on search, type in mix, mix shader, and drop it right there. So paint is on top, metal is underneath, and we're going to use the color output, keep it simple, uh, and the factor. So already you can see there's some of the shiny metal shining through. Now let's find an area of our model that has a uh, very hard edges. So this, this area is pretty good right here. Like there's some cubes and these cylinders are good. So hit Z and click on rendered. And my light is really bright. So let me turn that down. There we go. All right, so I don't have a really fast uh, gaming or render computer, so forgive me. Uh, <laughs> if you feel like donating one to me, I will be more than happy. So uh, you can already see as it clears up, the edges have a nice amount of noise to them which we can totally control. And they are basically revealing the metal texture underneath, which is reflective. So they are going to reflect whatever is around us. If you have a black environment, they're gonna reflect that. If you have a bright light, they're gonna reflect that too. So if I switch over to the dark side where the shadows are, the edges are now going to be reflecting the blackness of my world or my environment. Probably can't see them too well right here, but just a heads up, that's what's going on. So let's go back to our shader. Let's right click on our mesh. For me, it's right click. For you out there, you may have left click for select. And let's uh, zoom in a little closer and get to tweaking this thing. So I found that the radius for you know uh, dirty edges works best at 0.05. Uh, now that depends on the size of your mesh and things like that. But let's turn it up to 0.1 just to make it a little bit more visible, maybe 0.2. And you can see it spreads. It spreads from the sharp edge of the polygons or the edges, um, you know, in both directions around it. Now our noise mix, if we put it at zero, it's just the smooth, you know, uh, edge from the bevel and the normal being, you know, whatever that math is doing is basically making just a gradient around the edge. Not very impressive. But when you add that noise to it with our noise mix, which remember is on darken mode, it's darkening the uh, smooth gradient edge with the Musgrave texture. So it's mixing them together with the mix RGB. And that's what gives us a nice broken up pattern. Now play with this scale because depending on the size of your mesh, you may want a really you know, large scale or small scale of the noise. If we do super small, the noise is very large. So you can only see little chunks of it here and there, which is very random and not that great. Now, if you increase the number to maybe 10, let me zoom in a little closer, we can see it. That's a little better. And look at this, on this cube, the edges here are dark. Why is that? Because they are straight directions. They are reflecting the blackness of the environment, like I said earlier, whereas these rounded edges on this pipe and on this little uh, bolt thing, it's the cylinder, they're reflecting the light, which is right above the camera. Uh, so that's why we get some dark and some white, but that's good, that, that's more realism, right? All right, now, uh, so we've got radius, scale, noise mix. These two things only apply to the roughness output, which we're not using right now. You can use that if you're using an individual shader like this and you wanna you know, play with the roughness, um, you can plug it in and you've got the, the, the starting roughness and then the amount of noise you're adding to it. But for this, uh, I like to use the two, the two nodes set up and uh, it really allows us to see things better. You can also do some tricks to play with the you know, intensity of the edges. So I can maybe turn my noise mix to 0.5, so it's half smooth edge and half noise. And I can even use a math node right in here on, on basically the factor, set it to multiply, and maybe put it at two, which will increase the values by two, makes it a lot stronger of an edge. 
And I'm going to switch to a different model because I'm not liking how some of these edges are turning out. It's a great model, fun to play with for sure, but I'm going to show you on just some basic cubes so we can see a better representation of what this edge wear and tear is really looking like. All right, so we've got a uh, interesting little cubey shape here, lots of hard edges, even a bevel and a cylinder. Um, if you want to learn how to make stuff like this, I have two or three different videos about hard surface modeling tricks and techniques, and those will be really helpful if you want to learn to just make basic shapes like this. All right, so let's apply that material, which was called Edge Tutorial. Switch to Render View. And here we go. We've got the bright edges on top reflecting the light, the dark edges down here, uh, are reflecting the darkness around them and that is because this edging that's created by the nodes of bevel and normal um, multiplied or whatever that math is together it's making a mask just like in photoshop black is masked out and white is opaque or masked in so what's going on is it's basically allowing us to see two different shaders depending on what those edges are doing. Um, and some of them are very, <laughs> they're very harshly reflective right now. We can change that. See, I can actually see the cylinder over here reflected in this wall. So let's turn the roughness down on that metal shader. Go back to shading over here. That's because I had roughness all the way down, maybe 0.1. Let's put it at that. Might even render quicker, we'll see. So zoom in, maybe add some noise back to break up the patterns here. Set the scale to five. And our radius is really large, which is not realistic. If things are rubbing on edges, the edge wear is going to be only on those edges. So let's turn it back to 0 0.05, which gives a nice fine line. I really like how that looks, much more realistic. Now, the smoother an edge is, the less of uh, you know this edge effect is going to be applied. So if you have a rounded edge with a whole bunch of subdivision, it's probably not going to have any at all. In fact, let's test that right now. So you see these edges right here are really bright. You can see the fall off. You can see the noise. Let's round the heck out of this. I'm just going to grab the top and bottom line edges. Control B for bevel. I'm going to bring up the bevel pretty high. And I'm going to add a whole bunch of faces. Get out of edit mode. Let's let it render. There's a little bit of noise there, but that's okay. I'm fine with that small amount of noise, but it's way less than before. If you look at the face just above it, that's still flat and you know, 90 degree angles, it's a, it's a very stark contrast. I really like how these nodes handle sharp edges. It just seems it just seems more realistic to me. So if you want this node group to stay with you forever and always be available to use and reuse and tweak and improve on in your uh, default Blender file, what you wanna do is click on the node group here, Edge Detector, and click on this little shield that's going to keep it. So in case uh, you delete the object that this material was on or that this node group was on and you save and reopen it later, this group is still going to be here, even though it's not technically being used by anything. So click on that shield and we're good. We can delete this uh, object. Go back to our normal view. Set your view to however you want it to be whenever you open Blender. And then go up to File, Defaults, and Save Startup File. And then click on that. Cool, so it's done. I'm going to close and reopen Blender. Here we go, just how I left it. Shift A, let's make uh, Echo Sphere for no apparent reason. Go to Shading, New Material, and this is how to add your group, by the way. I didn't say this earlier. Shift A, and instead of clicking Search or searching through these, just go to Group, and we should have Edge Detector right there. Now, all these DG ones are one that I've pretty much, you know, settled on and I've mostly finalized. Um, here's my edge finder. I've got a scratcher, a scratchy, which uses image textures. I uh, wanted to add kind of a fine layer of dirt and noise, cyberpunk windows, and brush lines for metal. Uh, those will probably deserve their own videos later. But here's our edge detector that we just made, and everything is still there. We can plug it in, see that it's ready to go. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe. That helps me know that people out there like what I'm making, are watching it, and want to see more. And if you have any suggestions for future videos or things you'd like to see me make or teach, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week.